Hello everyone, my name is Michael and welcome to the next episode of this Scrappy Python tutorial. In this episode, we will see how we can create our first spider or our first task, let's say. And the task will be to scrape the quotes from this page right here. We will scrape all these quotes and yeah, let's see. Now, when web scrapping with Scrappy, proxies are a must. Without them, websites can detect too many requests coming from the same IP address and they will block you. That's why using a good proxy provider like Node Maven, which is the sponsor of this video, is key and they offer over 95% clean proxies, helping you avoid detection. Now, the only reason I recommend Node Maven is because I use it for my own projects and for my client projects. And I only be using Node Maven for months now, and that's why I partner with them. It's the only proxy provider I trust and I suggest for everyone. Plus, they let you choose between residential and mobile proxies, and even specify details like your country for more precise scrapping. Start using reliable proxies by using the link down in the description. And when you go on your checkout, make sure you click apply coupon here and type Michael to get two extra gigabytes at checkout. And also for a limited time period, we have two discount codes. One is Michael20, where you can get 20% off of any package you choose. Now this offer expires at December 7th, so make sure you grab it fast. And also there is a Black Friday deal. If you use the code BF24, you will get double your traffic for any business package you purchase with a subscription. Now I'll be covering in a future episode how we can use proxies with Scapy, so make sure you stay tuned for that. So yeah, let's get it started. So first of all, we'll go back to our code, go here on the spiders folder, and we will create our own spider, and let's call it quotes.py. Now the first thing we will do is import Scrappy, define a class, and let's name it quote spider. And this takes scrappy.spider as a parameter. And the first thing we need to define for each spider, for every spider we create, is the name. So we will pass the variable name. And let's name it quotes. Now, the next thing we need to do is define the start URLs. And we basically tell it with what URLs. It will start to scrape. For now, we will only give it the main URL. So again, here you define what URLs the script should scrape. Now, if you have many categories, for example, for a website, for example, if you want to scrape Amazon, you will pass here the shoes page or the books page or whatever you want. So you will pass multiple pages that you want to scrape. And then we need to define the parse function. Here we, put, here we put the self and also the response we get. Okay, now what we want to do is say for quote. And now we want to tell it a way to find all the quotes. Now we need to describe to Scrappy how to find the quote. Now the way to do that with web scrapping is by using CSS selectors. So if we right click and go to DevTools or click basically inspect, then we can click on this right here, up, up left. And as you'll see, if I click on this quote right here on this box, as you'll see, it's called as a class called quote. So if I type control F and type dot quote, dot means class so classes start with a dot if it was an id it will be a hashtag and everything else like the item scope or item type you have to copy that and put that in an array as we'll see right here but we will you we will be using something more generic like the class by the way if you want to find all the divs you just type div here but for now, we want to find all the quotes, so we'll be using the last name. And the way to tell it to find all the quotes will be response.css. 
And here we will define the selector. And then for each quote, we will say yield. Then we will open an object or a JSON basically. And again, we want to get three variables. First one will be the quote. The second one will be the author. And the third one will be the tags. Now, the same way we use to find the quotes, we will do to find each variable within that quote. So we will take this, copy it here. And then what our script does now is it goes on every element that matches the dot quote here. So for each element that matches this response.css, basically this returns an array. What we want it to do is, as you'll see right here, if we expand this, as you'll see for the quote, we can use the class text as a selector. So let's copy that. Go back and replace this with text. Go back and find the selector for the author. So as you'll see here, if we expand this, this is the author right here. Dot author will give us the author. And if we go back, as you'll see, for the tags will be dot tags here. But this will be not enough because I want to get each tag separately. So what I'll do is instead dot tags, and then I want to get, as you will see right here, dot tag, each tag, right, like that. Now what this will return is the entire element. For example, if I say dot text, it will return the HTML base, it will return the entire element. But instead, all I want is the text, as you'll see here, as when I hover right here, as you'll see, it pop out with a hashtag text. Now, the way to get this text is right here, we can say colon, colon, and then text. And this returns the text. Same for the author, colon, colon, text. And then again here, colon, colon, text. And this allows us to take the text property of the span. So by defining colon colon, and then here we define the property value. And then finally, what we need to do, we need, what we need to do here is say dot get, and this will get that property. The same we will do for the author, but for tags, because we expect many tags, we will say dot get all. I made a mistake here. You cannot say response.css because what this will do is get the first element that matches this selector, but for the entire page. But instead, I want to, to get uh, the first element for each quote. So I want to get the dot text, but for each quote. Because what I'm saying here is for each quote, from the quotes I find, get from that code instead, so let's say quote. So CSS for each variable, find an element within that quote and get the text. Now let's see how we can run the spider. Let's open terminal first of all. Let's click here terminal, new terminal, or open terminal however you like for your project folder. And what we will say is crappy, crawl, and here we will define the name we gave it right here. So quote. Now, for every spider we will create, whenever we want to run a certain spider, we just say scrappy, crawl, and that, and the spider name we defined right here. So let's run it. And as you'll see, it gives us a lot of data, but within that data, as you'll see, it gives us right here. The quote, the author, you'll see right here the author, and the tags. And that's it. We just scraped successfully our first data.
Now, this is really hard to read. So, what we can easily do with Strapi, which you cannot do with Selenium or Puppeteer, is you can say dash O, and then you can give it a file format you want it exported as. For example, if I want it in a CSV format, and it's say quotes dot CSV, and then it will scrape the data, it will scrape all the quotes and save them in a CSV format. So let's run it. And there you go, this is the result. So let's open it. And perfect, as you'll see. Actually, let's open it as a file so we can read it more easily. And there you go, this is our results. As you'll see, we can read it perfectly now. Here's our quotes. Here's the authors and here's the tags separated by comma. This is perfect now. And this is perfect. This makes it very easy to scrape the data and save them immediately. Now, if you wanted to do that with Selenium or Puppeteer, it will require more code, more resources, and it will be a lot slower than this. So that's how you can scrape data from a link and then save them to a file. Now we can also define instead of a CSV, you can also say .json for example. And as you'll see here, it saved them in a JSON format, which is perfect. It depends on what file extension you want. In the next video, I'll show you how you can handle pagination. For example, we can fetch the page and then see if it has a next button right here. And if it does, we will extract the link and visit that page and do and repeat the process. Now we will repeat the process until the page is finished and then save the data. I'll also show you how you can do a more advanced data extraction in the next episode and how you can handle edge cases. And yeah, with that said, make sure you hit that like button if you enjoyed this episode and you find it helpful. And make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you don't miss any of the future episodes of this series.